Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of Saturday Night Special. So I believe this week is going to be a little bit more of a hodgepodge uh, mix up of content for you. I've got a lot of different things I'm going to share, but it's uh, mostly pertaining to some collaborations and some, uh, some new tools and uh, just different things around the shop. So very little machining in this, if uh, possibly not any machining at all. So if you guys aren't into the uh, box opening videos and new tools and stuff, um, you might want to come back for another one later on. I will have some machining after this. The, it'll be the final machining video for the purge fixture for Jody. So that's going to follow this, this episode here. Uh, this is the week that I've been traveling. So I'm trying to get this done a little bit early so that, so that I would have an episode for you to watch. Okay. So behind me over here, I've got three boxes and these are, these are going to be collaboration jobs that I'm getting ready to start with some other YouTubers out there. So I wanted to share those with you and, uh, you know, show you what, it, what they are and what we need to do. And, uh, and I'll fill you in on who it is. And that's going to be some upcoming videos. You know, in the next several weeks, we're going to have those projects coming up. All righty. Also got a nice tool right here that uh, I have shown before, but it's been quite a while since I've shown that. But I had some help on that with uh, from my friend Lance, and he did he did a little bit of scraping on that. So we're gonna we're gonna check that out. And he also he also sent a couple gifts there with that. So we're gonna we're gonna check that out too. All righty. I've got a little bit of footage of Abby and I kind of hanging out together, and um, she's been in the process of moving. She is actually moving over here. Uh, with me so we've been doing a lot of cleaning up and trying to organize and get rid of things on both ends both here and at her place you already saw me do a landfill run from from my place here and that was just all trash and everything and I also helped her do a landfill run at her place because she had some old furniture that was no good that was not good to donate and uh, a lot of other things that we need to just get rid of. So we did another little landfill run with her on, uh, on her side, one I'd never been to before, but it was her first time ever doing anything like that. So I thought it'd be fun to take the camera along and get some footage of her. And I think you guys might enjoy that. So I'm gonna throw that into this episode. And we've also got a couple new tools that I picked up. So let's just go ahead and jump into it and, uh, and see what I got mixed up for you this week. All right, so our first collaboration that's going to be coming up when I'm when I'm through with the uh, the purge fixture. So how many of you guys know the essential craftsman Scott? Scott and his son Nate. So what I have here, and uh, I showed this in the uh, video where I went to Texas at the Go to Land Fest, but some of you guys didn't watch that. But anyway, what we have here is a vice handle that we're going to be machining for. Scott and Nate you got some tape on it right there, but uh, So they are restoring an old Wilton vice and This was the handle That was originally on that vice you can see it's pretty battered up somebody's hammered on it quite a bit All right, so they wanted to kind of put something a little bit special back into this vice restoration so Scott forged this piece of steel right here and he had forged this out of a piece of, it was a spring steel off of a railroad cart. And that's what he used to make this material right here. So what he had asked me if I could do is actually machine it. You know, he doesn't want to leave it forged, but we want to turn it so it's got a nice finish on it. And then probably machine the, the balls on the end, make those nice and uniform. And what I'll have to do is, is remove one of these and you know cut it off and have it machined so that they can put it back together and once they do their restoration they can fit it in the, the main screw and then put the ball back on there and uh, so that's that's the collaboration project right there so that's going to be coming up pretty soon and uh, if you don't know his channel essential craftsman i'd advise you to go check it out he's a awesome guy to listen to and uh I just love listening to his stories and how he explains things and what they get into. They do a lot of uh, construction work and uh, blacksmith work, carpentry work and things like that. And I just, it was a pleasure to meet those guys at the Good of the Land Fest. And I was honored that they asked me to do a collaboration project with them. So that's it. We're going to be getting to this pretty soon. So here's another collaboration job that arrived in the mailbox. And how many of you guys out there know Eric, 
at a hand tool rescue. He's, uh, he's another person that I got to meet there at the Good Little Land Fest back in November. And uh, he and I become friends and uh, he's an awesome dude, makes me laugh. But he does a lot of cool restorations on his channel of uh, different tools, hand tools, machinery, and uh, power hammers and things like that. So he's got another power hammer that he's gonna be restoring. And this is gonna be one of the replacement parts for that power hammer, all right? It's, um, I don't know the whole story of it, but I know that he acquired this power hammer and throughout the period of time that this thing has been owned by some other people, they had some pieces cast up to replace on that power hammer. And so he's got a couple of components here that need the final machining done on it. And he asked me if I would be willing to help him out, you know, and collab on this project. So absolutely. This is the one that I picked out. And I believe what we're going to have is we're going to have to bore that out. We'll have to bore that. And then there's going to be, there's going to be a nice split cut right through here. So I see some, uh, possibly some horizontal milling that I can do with this. And then I believe we got to drill some holes here and I believe there's some more holes in here, but I don't have the print yet. Uh, that I'm still waiting on that to show up. He was going to have some copies of the original prints made and then mail them to me so that would ha I would have the dimensions for this thing right here. So another fun project that's going to be coming up real soon uh, for uh, Eric at Hand Tool Rescue. So be sure to check him out as well. If you don't know him, he's a good channel to watch. And I look forward to uh, getting started on this pretty soon too. All right, so here's our third collaboration that we're going to be doing. And this is a box that was sent to me from Quinn Dunkey. And I got to meet Quinn at in uh where were we at we were kansas city missouri actually it was independence when i had my meet and greet there and she came out there to the uh, meet and greet and i got to meet her she also has a youtube channel there blondie hacks and she has a, a website there also blondie hacks and does a lot of different machining and uh, hobby type work there on her channel but she reached out to me a couple months ago and gave me this idea that she had about starting a collaboration project between several different you know machinists uh, out there on youtube and what it would consist of is is going to start with her and she's going to make something just something complete random and then once she makes it she's going to send it to the next person which is me and then i'm going to do something to that project whatever it is i want to do okay the sky's the limit you know i can modify it i can add to it i can cut it up she said if i want to whatever I want to do. And so whenever I'm through with uh, my end of it, then I'm going to be sending it all along to the next person. All right. So I thought it would be a, a fun project to be involved with and, uh, you know, have my viewers involved with as well. So this is the box. I have not opened it up yet to uh, see what's inside. And uh, so I thought I would give you guys an unboxing. That's sort of part of the, um, that's part of the rules of this um, this collaboration here is unboxing it and you know revealing it and that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead. I'll pan you down so you can see this. What's in here? All right, let's check it out. Let's see what she's done. Welcome to the Machinist Relay. That's what she's calling it there. And I guess I'm gonna have to put my signature on there. So we can be creative in any way we want. We can uh, sign this, and uh, I think I've got a cool brand that I can uh, use on this thing right here. All right, so let's get in here and see what she has done. The project so far, what is it? What is the project? <laughs> look at all this, look at all the decorations that she's put in there. Leave your mark. All right, so there's uh, Quinn's website right there, blondiehacks.com. She's very cool. I, I appreciated being able to talk to her. A bunch of the uh, Canadian flags in there. <laughs> there's a maple leaf. All right. There's a notepad in there, Canada. So she says that, uh, you know, part of the rules is that you can throw whatever you want in here. Uh, stickers, swag, tools, anything, and, uh, and just pass it on. Sort of a grab and take and give type, type of thing. All right. So we'll move this out of the way and see what's in the other box. 
All right, Quinn, it's not very heavy, so let me find my knife. I think we're going to have to add a little bit of mass to this project and uh, start getting the, the scale to rise. Well, there it is. So what is it? We don't know. That's the question. <laughs> it's, uh, just making sure there's nothing else. I don't think there's anything else there with it. So it's a pre uh, piece of brass bar that she has machined. We've got some slots milled in the end. There's a piece of steel milled there in the middle. And it looks like there's a pin there for it to hinge on. Yep. Okay. And there's a magnet down inside there. Got a nice catch. So what is that to you guys? What do you think? What did she create right here? And what can we do to this <laughs> to uh, make it even better? So that's what's fun about this project is that we can do anything that we want to do. We can add to this. We can add this to another piece or whatever. So I'm going to have to get creative. If you guys have any fun ideas, maybe you can throw me a comment out there and I'll scan through them and see what you guys think. And we will uh, get started on this project pretty soon. So there you go. Quinn, I appreciate you uh, asking me to uh, come along on this adventure right here. We'll bring you guys back whenever we start on this project. All right. So you guys have been watching for a while. You guys might remember what this is. And a while back, whenever I had went to the, uh, the Richard King scraping class up at uh, Keith Rucker's shop, I took this, and this is a cast iron surface plate that I was going to try to scrape in. I never really got, I just got started on it and never did finish it or do anything more with it. So my friend Lance uh, really, really took a liking to the scraping and he, I can tell that he does it uh, out of pure joy and he's been doing a bunch of it on his uh, Monarch 10 E, and he's gotten really good. He does a lot of the scraping on all his uh, machine tool accessories. So I want you to look at this right here. Lance offered, this has been several months back, he offered to uh, take this surface plate and finish scraping it in for me. And uh, I, so I, I let him have it. We met up one day and uh, I let him take it and, and he has taken his time and getting this scraped in. And it took about 10 thousandths to get this thing completely flat. Uh, back whenever I had shown uh, power scraping it, we, uh, we blued it on the granite table and it was hitting on the two corners here, or it may have been these two, but it was hitting on two corners and it had sort of a dip in the middle of it right there. And we didn't think it was much, you know, maybe two or three thousandths, but it ended up taking 10 thousandths to get this thing to uh, touch all the way around flat. And Lance has done a wonderful job on this. I don't know if the uh, camera is showing how beautiful this is, but I'll have some extra pictures to throw in there so that you can kind of see it in different light. It also helps to just kind of give it a nice little buff with some WD-40. We'll just give it a little wipe right here. And that little bit of rock is because the, uh, the table is not perfectly flat on those four feet. But Lance did a wonderful job on that scraping. And uh, if I forgot to mention this belonged to my granddad and my dad. This was a, a surface plate at the old shop, at our old booth machine shop. And every now and then we used it for something, but we didn't really have a whole lot of need for using surface plates during that time. So we always kept it covered up. There was a nice cover for it. And every now and then we would use it. But I got to thank Lance for uh, doing this. It looks absolutely beautiful. Just a wonderful job. Uh, most of this is hand scraped. There is some sections whenever he was having to take it down. He was using the Biax power scraper to really move the metal. But once he got it down to where it was nearly done, this is all hand finished, you know, hand, hand scraping, you know. So just looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. By the way, he scraped it into 30 points per inch. So what that means is that within one square inch, 
anywhere on this plate, there's approximately 30 points of contact. All right. So in addition to this, this is something else that Lance has been doing. He, uh, you know, he loves the precision grinding and the uh, scraping and things like that. So he has started making these uh, these precision stones. These are some Norton uh, combination India stones, you know, also known as a bent stone. But what he has done is uh, he is now grinding these in. So he is he is selling these by the sets because you do them in pairs and they're precision ground completely flat and it is just absolutely wonderful whenever you have some stones that are just perfectly completely flat that have been surface ground it just glides across okay both sides of them are done and as i said they come in pairs so you can just feel it as it's coming down where it just floats on air. And you can give this a nice little buff with that stone and it just really makes all the high points just pop and shine, look like stars. So anyway, as I was saying, Lance is now making these and he's selling them, he is taking orders on them and I think he's doing you know, approximately 10 pairs at a time. So I'm gonna have his uh, email and contact info in the video description down below if uh, you have interest in maybe taking an order of uh, one of these pairs of stones right there, you'll absolutely love them. They're perfect for uh, machine tables, you know, like your milling machine table. You take these over there to it, you just give it a nice little rub, and any little tiny ding or high spot in that, in that table, it's going to be, you know, honed down with these stones right there. So it's a wonderful tool to have. So Lance, thank you very much for the scraping job. You did, you did a, a beautiful job on this scraping and it definitely is a nice booth heirloom and i'm going to sure appreciate having it around here and i'm always going to know who, who scraped this thing in flat man and uh, thank you again for the stones too awesome i've got some really cool gifts here in from uh, a friend of mine and one of my followers on instagram and it is from kurt bilston and he is the program coordinator over there at Harper College, and they are located up in uh, Palestine, Illinois. And Kurt helped me out with one of the tools that uh, I had actually, uh, I broke one of my tools and he wanted to replace it for me, so we'll get to that in just a second. But I wanted to uh, uh, share with you guys, Kurt, and a little bit about their uh, college over there and what they, what they offer. So they have manufacturing technology. They actually offer an associate's degree there in manufacturing technology. So they have a full on machine shop and teach you everything you need to know about machining, CNC machining, manufacturing, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So pretty cool, pretty cool program over there. They also have one for maintenance technology. And another one there as well for uh, for welding. So they offer all the all the important trades out there, you know, teaching you uh, machining and millwright type work, you know, maintenance and repair technicians, and uh, and welding. All right. So I just wanted to mention a little bit about that about uh, their their program. So Kurt sent along this awesome brand new. Chicago dial indicator, dial indicator. <laughs> and uh, I didn't actually get any video of it, but a couple months ago, I was doing some indicating on the shaper with one of my Starrett tense indicators and I accidentally engaged the round when I shouldn't have and I crushed that indicator. And I believe I have it sitting right over here that I can show you. Yep, this is it right here. <laughs> so this is the one that I crushed and it absolutely got it so there's really no more coming back from this and i decided just go ahead and keep it for a memory sake you know there's no point in trying to replace it because everything's broke on it so we're just going to keep it and um, might go in the display cabinet as one of my one of my fond memories of screwing up in the shop so after that had happened because i shared a picture of that on instagram kurt had messaged me and offered to replace it with a Chicago dial indicator and that's what he has done so uh, he asked me to pick out 
the dial indicator that I wanted. And so what I did was I picked out a tense indicator to replace the stare at tense indicator that I have. And I went with one that I thought was be a little bit easier to view on video, having the uh, black dial face and a little bit larger in diameter. So this is it right here. And it's got a little bezel protector on there, a crystal protector. So let's go ahead and take that off. And there we go, an absolute beauty. Tents indicator. They've got the info there on the side. They do, uh, they build these to order. This, this particular model is built to order. So I believe it was a five week delivery on this thing. It's been a couple months since we had that discussion about replacing it, but he, uh, he wanted to supply me with a brand new indicator. So Kurt, I really appreciate it. Awesome gift, man. Can't wait to use this on video, put it to work. And uh, hopefully you guys are going to be able to see this one a little bit easier versus the, uh, the standard white dial face on it. All right. So awesome gift, Kurt. Thank you very much. In addition to the indicator, Kurt had threw in all this stuff in the box there too as, uh, as gifts he wanted me to have. Uh, just some different cutters. We got some 31, 30 seconds end mills here. I thought that was pretty cool because I, I don't have any of that size right there. A little bit of an oddity. Looks like some things that they've cut out on their CNC plasma. A couple F-bombs. <laughs> Just some uh, metal art right there that they've created. And he sent along some books. Pipe fitters book, electrical engineers book, structural welding code, and then uh, bending basics as well as some uh, turning tools right here. Got a boring bar and then some other, some other turning tools. And then there's also some drill bits and end mills over here that you can't see on video. And uh, this guy right here is a nice lefty. It's a pretty good size. It's, uh, I don't know, it looks to be around maybe seven eighths or so. So this, this could come in handy one day for getting out one of those A-bomb size broken bolts out of something. But a uh, cool group of gifts, Kurt. Oh, also the, uh, the shirt there that he had made for me as well. Got the Harper College logo on it. So very nice stuff. Thanks, thanks Kurt. I'm taking Abby on her very first landfill experience and she's super excited she's never been to a landfill before she has no idea how much fun it can be to I haul away trash i don't think excited is the word <laughs> well um <laughs> you're excited <laughs> it's fun to clean up and get away you know get rid of all the junk and everything i'm actually helping her uh, we're in her neck of the woods and we're cleaning up she's been cleaning out the house and we've got a trailer load of old furniture and just old stuff that we're just gonna get rid of so mm -hmm. uh, I've never been to this landfill before I don't really know what it's what it looks like out here but we're about to find out getting ready to drive up on the scales right now it seems a little creepy to me but I'll be the she judge. thinks landfills are creepy they are creepy she it's thinks it's gonna trash. she thinks it's gonna smell like trash too so I don't it's know. just weird it's a weird we're, thing we're about to find out all right waiting on this guy to get off the scale he's looking at me like wondering why I got a camera in my hand <laughs> So let's go up on the scale and get out and talk to the nice lady. So I did call ahead to make sure we could come out here. Okay, so I got a map of where we're going. Just to go check it out. Really? Yeah. Got a nice paved road back here. Can we just keep going? Yeah. Just check it out. put a layer of trash and then they put like dirt and mulch and that kind of stuff on top of it and they just keep piling it up. And you can see another hill back there. It's another mound of trash. It's a nice property back here. Yeah, it is. Turn off the paved road. <laughs> It. see the big hole you can you can see where they see they fill they they dump the trash here so 
they dump the trash in the hole and they cover it up with a layer of dirt and debris and mulch and then they keep piling on top of it again. You know what they are, but when you see them, it's weird. <laughs> Learning what landfill is all about, babe. <laughs> Kind of, kind of hope it so wouldn't. I, I think we're going right there. Remember I told you, you back up and then they have bulldozers yeah. that kind of like push everything back. You think they'll let me use the bulldozer? I don't think I want to. I don't think. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you flash them. <laughs> But this is nice style though because you don't have to you, you just throw everything off yeah you just throw everything off and then... now i'm gonna hold the camera while he unloads everything I think we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, oh, you're going to let me unload and you're going to film? All right. Yep. Let me get out of the way so you don't hit me in the face. Thank you. Man, this is so weird. See, it's exactly like I told you. You just... I've been trying to teach Abby what a landfill is. <laughs> I know what a landfill is. You've never been to a landfill? I've never been to one, no. I told you, you just dump it off and then the bulldozer shoves it all down the hill. You can feel the, you can feel the ground like bouncing. Why the tractor's moving. <laughs> That's what happens. It's good to clean out. She, I told her she got to clean out. He's been sassing me, everyone. Know that. I'm what? He's sassing me. Why were you holding a box? Why were you keeping the TV box? It was for my monitor, and it's easier to move it with a box. Why are you you sound monitor? very judgy. Why are you gonna move a Extremely judgy right now. You buy a monitor, you use it and when it's bad you throw it away <laughs> very very judgy <laughs> that also sounds a little judgy but she's getting rid of the pink suitcase that's because the airline ripped the whole front off oh they tore it up you can see that on the belt you gotta you can see it from space the, the louis vuitton bag does right. we don't want to talk about the louis vuitton it bag was, going in the trash the cardboard bag not the real bag no no of course not <laughs> it was just the box but it's still really sad at the time. Need some help? I'm going to see if I can get it off there. But... Yes. <laughs> Every time you touch it, your fire <laughs> That's why it's going. Do I need to help you? You're doing great. You're doing great. Keep going. All right. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Bye, Sofa. Oh. Yay. Yay. Look. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yes. That's the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Debris, you know, from uh, you know, new building that's been going on. All right, we better go. Let's get out of his way. So tell him, tell him what you think about your first landfill experience. Okay, I was a little skeptical, but it was pretty cool. It wasn't stinky or anything because they don't do food trash. And the fact that he grabbed the sofa and destroyed it was totally amazing. That made the whole trip worthwhile. <laughs> I loved it so much. I hope we can get like a slow mo of that because oh, we'll have that to, was we'll awesome. Have to do a slow -mo of that. <laughs> that that couch has been in her garage for like eight years. And that is wrong. She's like, I can't just put it out by the road. I won't get it. It's what the landfills are uh, for. Crazy. Good first experience. For the many of you that probably aren't aware, Abby and I are now engaged. I, I proposed to her back during our. Uh, cruise or Christmas cruise and uh, luckily she said yes so her and I are going to be getting married and we uh, we've been making our plans for that and it's coming up pretty soon where we decided we do not want a traditional wedding we we just we have no interest in that we don't want a big group of people we want to kind of uh, make it a little bit different a little bit more fun this time a little bit more off the cuff so her and I are planning on going to Vegas in a couple of months and we're going to be getting married out there and uh, it's just going to be immediate family, such as her parents and my parents. And we're going to have a little small group and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to go out there for a couple of days. We're going to do the wedding thing there in Vegas and uh, and have some fun. And then afterwards, we, we actually have a trip plan, which is what we're going to be calling our honeymoon, where we're going to be exploring the Southwest. So Abby's been working on this website for uh, a gift registration where it's not your traditional gift registry where you're actually like buying silverware and dishes and things like that and giving it to somebody. This is a registry that that will um, apply towards, you know, the actual honeymoon trip there. So there's different things on there, uh, you know, simple things such as food, gas, hotels, um, entry fees into to parks, uh, airfare, you know, things like that. So. Uh, any of you guys have any interest in uh, checking that out? I'll have a link in the video description down below and uh, you know, we would surely appreciate it You guys can uh, help us out there and uh, You know on our honeymoon trip and uh, support us that way if you would like so total voluntary But I wanted to put that out there and share with you guys We're we're passing it on to all of our family and all of our friends so that they all know about it and anything that they might want to help out with they can just go to that website and pick something from that and uh, help us really enjoy our honeymoon trip. So I do have a little bit of video plans of the Vegas trip out there and uh, I'll be sharing that with you on the channel later on whenever that happens and when we come back. All right, so I appreciate it guys. Mm -hmm.